Good to see you everyone. My name is Robbie Howell and this is Theorycraft, a show where I take civilizations not yet present in Age of Empires 2 and I take my best shot at implementing a sensible and historical design for them that could plausibly fit in the game as we know it. But this... This is no civilization. Indeed, quite a few of my Theorycraft videos are on units that I'd like to see implemented into Age of Empires 2. And on this particular episode, we are doing our first double header, a pair of units, ones that I very much hope you are familiar with if you even have a cursory knowledge of medieval arms and armaments. Take a look at this poll in front of you. Who's winning it by far and away? Yes, indeed, today's episode will be on the bowmen and crossbowmen, a subdivision of the current archer line. So why am I subdividing the archer line? Well, if you know anything about me, you know that I like to tackle all sorts of obscure and unusual civilizations, and as it turns out, it really doesn't make sense that the only representation of elite archers we have in the game that are not unique units are arbalists, a weapon that, while not rare, served a very different function than the bow in pretty much every medieval battlefield that it appeared on. It is just silly that we don't have proper archers fighting alongside or instead of crossbows, and that is what this build seeks to remedy. As always, if you'd like all of the details on this build, all the statistics, and a complete civilization availability grid, as well as my sources, take a look at the unit document down in the description. It contains all the info on both of these two units. And without further ado, let's begin this process with a brief overview of the history of the bow and crossbow in the AOE2 relevant time period beginning with the bow. Surprising, I hope no one, bows are the second most pervasive weapon in the entire world, beaten only by spears in terms of their battlefield usage. They were used by literally every civilization present in Age of Empires II as of now, including all of the builds that I did, even the Polynesians. Such a fixture were they that a great many civilizations entirely developed their military strategy around how and where to use their archers. Because it wasn't just any old asshole who was given a bow and told to go fight. Yes, in a number of European countries, they were often given to peasant levies as kind of a weak supporting covering fire style unit that wasn't really intended to score many kills. But in many other cultures, including a couple ones in Europe, the bow was the weapon of the elite. In many parts of Africa, Asia, and the Americas, bows were closely associated with lordship and kingship, a symbol of strength and power. And while Europe was an exception here, that's not because European bows were bad. And there were still a number of very famous archer elites to come out of Europe during this period the English longbowmen being the most famous among them. What I'm trying to get at with all of this is we should not disregard the bow as a weapon of ineffectual irregulars on the battlefield. They could be absolutely devastating in the hands of well-trained archers wielding high poundage weapons. Because remember, bows come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. A hunting bow has maybe a 30 pound draw. When I was training in archery, I mostly used about 30 pound weapons. And even those took a lot of strength to use and had pretty impressive power and range. Contrast that to the average medieval war bow, which had a poundage of 90 to 100. That's more than three times a hunting bow. So with all this in mind, my goal for this redesign of the archer into the bowman was to give a familiar fallback to the more radical design of the crossbow that I'm also going to propose. My bowman unit is likely to play very similar to the current archer line, even if it has a number of key differences from it, which opens the unit up to more civilizations from a historical justification standpoint, while also justifying it being removed from certain civilizations that traditionally focused more on the crossbow, giving them different strengths and weaknesses overall, and allowing civilizations to have differences in what ranged power units they default to. It just doesn't make sense to me right now how many civilizations have amazing archers, to the point where many of them end up playing similarly because of how important the archer is at virtually all stages of the game. Now, the other one is I have a lot of ideas going forward on how I'd like to see archers change overall in Age of Empires, and so for this Bowman build, I'm hoping to introduce a couple of those ideas without going as deep into the process as I'm hoping to going forward. And so 
take a lot of the proposals that I have for this Bowman unit as indicators of how I hope to see the game change more broadly going forward in respect to this particular unit class. With all that being said, let's jump into the history of the crossbow, because it is a substantially older weapon than many people might realize. While the crossbow only became popular in Europe after the turn of the first millennia AD, it was present in China and Greece in BC times. I don't know how the other culture might have learned about the weapon and adopted it, maybe through trade roofs, maybe it was even convergent evolution. Once the crossbow was popularized, however, it completely changed how warfare worked. Obviously, it was extremely threatening, even in the hands of a completely untrained user, and it largely upset the whole noble commoner dynamic in war, but if you know anything about medieval military history, none of this will be new to you. Similarly, I'm pretty sure almost all of you know about the fact that the crossbow was famously outlawed at various points, but no one cared because it was such a powerful weapon, so they just kept using it despite the various social pressures, making it completely ubiquitous right up until the end of the AOE2 relevant time frame, which again, I personally put at about 1600 AD. Once again, most of this is pretty common knowledge to anyone with an interest in medieval history, which I I'm sure most of you are, so let's move on to the goal that I had in my crossbow unit design. Firstly, very similarly to my goal for my arquebus design, which I'd highly recommend you check out if you haven't seen it yet, I really want to add more diversity in terms of late game power units. The sort of thing you can have 40 of in your control group one and just micro around the battlefield while your chaff is dying in droves out front. Currently in the game, this sort of role is either served by the arbalester, maybe heavy cavalry, or a unique unit at times, and that seems seems somewhat limited to my liking, and I really think the game could benefit from having more power units available, especially in the late stages of the game. And with this crossbow unit, the hope was to allow it to do that while still feeling very different from the bowman line and other potential ranged power units I might add in future, like the aforementioned arquebus. This crossbow design has very distinct strengths and weaknesses from both of the above, though it is a little more similar to the arquebus, which is something I did take into consideration as I was doing the design not wanting the two to make each other completely irrelevant. The other major goal I had was for this crossbow unit to be good against elite melee units, because that's one of the major things that the introduction of the crossbow did to historical battlefields. No longer could knights and nobles feel safe in the assumption that the commoners could do nothing to hurt them. The crossbow completely upended the power dynamic. And this would be in sharp contrast to the bowman, which is typically, on average, going to be better against weaker levy units rather than more heavily armored elite units. You'll still be able to micro them, of course, so in practice you're still going to have a fine time with bowmen against such units, and I really wanted to accomplish this anti-elite setup without having an explicit attack bonus versus elite units. That is something I did consider, as I'll get into later, but it just felt kind of lazy, and I much prefer when a unit is able to counter another unit through its playstyle rather than just making its bonus damage go up. And with that, we come to the end of the history section for this unit build. If that's all you were here for, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe before you go. And for all of those who, like me, love Age of Empires and want to see what I've done with these units, let's move on to the game mechanics section. I have it formatted a little differently this time, and of course, we're handling two units. So let's begin with the Bowman line. The Bowman is available in Feudal Age from the Archery Range, what a surprise, and in Castle Age it upgrades to the War Bowman, and in Imperial Age it upgrades to the Great Bowman. Their stats are almost identical to the current Archer line. Of course, reskinned, but still very, very similar. There are, however, a couple of notable exceptions. Let's go through them. First, their cost has changed. It's now plus 10 wood, minus 10 gold. My reason for doing this will become a little bit more obvious later, so I'll leave it for now. Second thing, longer train and upgrade times. In history, archers took quite a while to become proficient with their weapon, especially because they needed to build up those back and shoulder muscles required to draw and hold a bow. And because of that, it just felt ridiculous to me that archers in Age of Empires take such a relatively short amount of time to train. This will, of course, make it harder to mass up bowmen, which I personally think is probably a good thing due to how absolutely overwhelmingly strong crossbow play is in the current game in Castle Age, so I felt like it was a good idea to kind of tone that down. But to compensate, my bowman line gets plus one range across all of its upgrades. However, it has minimum range, like a skirmisher, and more of an attack delay. My reasoning for this, 
Try shooting a bow when someone's stabbing you. Archers were more nimble units. They needed to stay away from enemies, and this will make cavalry much more threatening, fulfilling the rocks, paper, scissors system that the game wants to have in place for infantry being good against cavalry, cavalry good against archers, archers good against infantry. That plus one range will help a lot versus infantry, and the greater attack delay will make it just that much harder to micro, such that mangonels, for example, are still quite a good counter. I know that adding plus one range to one of the most commonly used units in the game will screw up a lot of balance and design. I am totally aware of that. This build could not just be dropped into the game right now with no ramifications, but it is a start and it is indicative of where I'd like to go with archers more broadly going forward. So as you can see, they should play quite similar, but with their bonus range and minimum range, they'll want to stay further away than they do now. And they hopefully won't do that stupid hide in a corner and shoot you without you being able to hit them back effectively thing, which I absolutely loathe. Their civilization availability will also be very similar to the current archer line, though there are a couple of balance and history changes, and like I said earlier, there are some civilizations whose bowmen will be quite limited, but will get very good crossbows to compensate. And like I said, just keep in mind that this would be the first step in a broader archer change going forward, there's no way that this would work in the game as it is right now. Moving on to technologies. There are two technologies specific to the Bowman line, self bow and composite bow, both of which are available from feudal age at the archery range. They are mutually exclusive. A civilization can never have both of these technologies. Both would be relatively expensive technologies for the feudal age, almost bloodlines levels, costing 150 food and either 50 wood for the self bow, 50 gold for the composite bow, and their results would similarly mirror each other. Self bow would give the bowman line bonus hit points and adjust their cost by plus 10 wood, minus 10 gold. To contrast, composite bow improves the bowman's speed and rate of fire, but makes their cost adjusted by minus 10 wood, plus 10 gold. This draws a clear distinction between civilizations who get access to one of these technologies over the other. If you are a self-bow civilization, you will be able to use your bowmen much more liberally in post-imperial situations. They'll be tankier, they'll be overall cheaper in terms of gold, which is typically what you care about in those situations. On the other hand, if you are a composite bow civilization, your bowmen will be much better at microing. They'll be overall more dangerous, better at hit and run, but also a good deal more expensive expensive, making it hurt more if you actually manage to lose them. For some civilizations who get access to the self-bow side of this pairing, you can take a look at the Celts, the Ethiopians, the Mayans, as well as my civilizations, the Swedes and the Moravians. Obviously there are many more besides, but you'll notice that while there are some really strong archer civs here, especially the Mayans and the Ethiopians, there are some ones that don't have fantastic archers, but through unlocking this technology, will be able to use them in a slightly more productive manner during certain stages of the game, specifically the Celts, who've needed some love for their archers for quite some time. For the composite bow side, there are a whole host of other options at your disposal. You have Bulgarians, Koreans, and Persians from base game, as well as the Jurchens and Egyptians from my civilizations. The Bulgarians are a bit of a meme here, but other than that, you can see kind of a nice diversity across what civilizations have access to this. Persians, for example, won't even feel the gold cost due to Commander N, and it will give their trash bows a whole lot more oomph late game, while the Koreans and Egyptians will be able to use this technology to make their good archers even better. Let's talk about the crossbow side of the situation. My design of the crossbow unit. You have the crossbowman in Castle Age and the arbalist in Imperial Age. Yes, arbalist is a word. I hate the word arbalester, but I agree that arbalest isn't quite right for the unit anyways, because that's the name of the weapon, not the person who is using it. So the crossbowman is built at the archery range from Castle Age. However, they must first be installed before they can be trained. Kind of like how cannon galleons and hand cannoneers used to work way back in the day. It's a fairly cheap cost to get access to the crossbowman. And in return, you are gaining access to a pretty strong unit that could easily be the backbone of a civilization with all of its upgrades available. It costs 20 wood and 50 gold, so reasonably expensive. It has decent attack, even decent HP, and good train time for an archer. That's a big advantage since it means you'll be able to mass them up very quickly. It does have relatively poor speed as well as bad rate of fire. It's very easy to catch up to a crossbow even with infantrymen, so you need to be careful with how you position them, but they get bonus damage and armor pass versus closer targets. What does that mean? Well, for every range closer than five that an enemy target is, the crossbowman gains plus one damage and ignores one of their pierce armor, so effectively plus two damage. 
If you're firing point blank, that's four bonus damage and four pierce armor ignored. Wow, that's a ton of additional power. And the Arbalest even starts that range counter plus one up. So their damage cap is even higher than the former crossbowmen. This doesn't apply to Siege though, I should note. The downside is that the crossbowmen and Arbalest cannot reload their attack while they're either moving or being attacked in melee combat. That means that even if you can shoot that knight for a bajillion damage, if it survives, your crossbowman is screwed. So what we see here is a unit that has a really high risk-reward trade-off. If you can hold your fire until the enemy gets close, you can do a shitload of damage, but you are also risking a bunch of your crossbowmen being completely taken out of the action by enemies riding them down. Why do I have it this way? Well, try reloading a crossbow. Thing takes like 20 seconds of committed hand cranking. And if you're using one of the smaller ones that you just pull up the string, that's still like five to 10 seconds. So why didn't I give the crossbowman a minimum range? Well, it's a whole lot easier to shoot a crossbow at someone right in front of you than it is to shoot a bow. Again, having used a bow before, those things shake a lot when you are under pressure. You need to be perfectly still to get the thing to move the way you want it to, and failing to do so could cause something like a dry fire where you misrelease the string and the arrow doesn't even fly, or more likely just a completely garbage shot. Crossbows, on the other hand, you just need to point and shoot. So it made more sense that you'd be able to do it while up close and personal with your enemy. Plus, again, gives them a different niche, which is something I was really trying to accomplish with this build. Now, in terms of the availability of the crossbowmen, there are quite a lot of civilizations that get access to them, but for some civilizations that have access to both the crossbowmen and the arbalist, we're looking at ones like the Bengalis and Chinese, as well as the Franks, who of course don't have great archers right now, the Italians, surprising no ones, and even the Vietnamese, as well as the Romans, Egyptians, and Novgorodians among my civilizations. So we have quite a good mix here. Some committed archer civilizations, some ones who formerly had very bad archers, and I should note that a number of these civilizations also have access to perfectly decent bowmen as well, in some cases very good bowmen. So many armies are going to want to use a mix of both, which is in fact quite historically accurate. Once again, if you want to see a full civilization availability grid, go check out the unit document down in the description below. The crossbow line has one unique technology that I've designed for them, that being windless. This is a Castle Age technology costing 250 wood, 250 gold. It is at the archery range, and it gives plus one attack and a little bit of reduced rate of fire for the crossbow line. It also benefits crossbow unique units like the Chukonu and Jenbo. While not 100% necessary for a civilization to have usable crossbows, Windless will certainly improve the power and damage output of your crossbow line, and therefore if you have access to it and are trying to go crossbows, it is an absolute must-have. In terms of some civilizations who have access to it, looking at the Burgundians, Lithuanians, Saracens, Teutons, as well as the Swiss and Danes among my civilizations. So once again, we're looking at some civilizations who don't necessarily have good archers in the game right now, but thanks to the crossbow line being subdivided and better specified through technologies like Windless, that it gives those civilizations some valid ranged options that are historically authentic and strategically diverse that they might be able to make use of. Touching upon the crossbow's playstyle, I'm not going to focus on the bowman's playstyle since, again, I'm hoping it would be very similar to the current archer line, but in my opinion, my design of the crossbow would obviously have the main strength of having great damage output and being a very, very strong versus elite melee units. Same as it was in history. If you have a critical mass of these, they will absolutely obliterate enemy knights, which will be a big swing in Castle Age. If you're good at timing their increasing damage based on range effect, you might even be able to get away with one-shotting enemy knights with a relatively small group of these, leading to some really interesting high-skill risk-reward trade-off scenarios. And while they are specialized versus melee elites, they are very good against pretty much all all infantry, though of course cavalry are quite good at catching them out. In terms of their weaknesses, of course, they don't have micro potential. The fact that they cannot move and shoot is a big downside of the crossbow and forces them to play a lot more sedentary than the bowman line. That's probably, in my opinion, going to be the major distinguishing factor between the two. Secondly, unlike the bowmen, they are much weaker to other ranged units, especially things like the Mangonel line. The fact that you can't move and shoot is really bad against them, and plus they don't get any bonus damage if they get up close and personal with the Mangonel. 
Additionally, enemy skirmishers are going to be quite dangerous because you won't be able to take advantage of reducing pierce armor unless you try to get right up on top of the enemy skirms, who will always be able to outrun you due to your low speed. So just in general, it's a ranged power unit that's not good against enemy ranged units. And overall, they just really, really need screening units to be in front of them. Halberdiers are going to be their absolute best friend, but cavalry and any other infantry will do it in a pinch. Because just in general, the crossbow line will get absolutely slaughtered if they get into melee combat. And because of that, you need to make sure you're protecting them effectively for them to be doing work for you. Now, in terms of what else the crossbow line can be used for, they are also kind of an anti-anti-archer unit. So enemies that are normally very good against archers, especially things like Huskarls and Elite Eagle Warriors, the crossbow line will actually be quite effective against because it can pass through a lot of their pierce armor. But it's not something you necessarily want to rely on them to do. And similarly, while their micro potential makes them much worse at being that kind of late game control one stack that you just march around and kill everything with, they can serve that role pretty sufficiently if you are patient. Especially if you're doing like a death ball or creeping advance or something like that, the crossbow line will be quite strong, whereas if you're trying to get behind enemy lines and do raiding, they're probably going to get killed in moments. Along those lines, they are very easy to mass due to their low training time, and considering the amount of damage they can do, their price tag is quite competitive and will likely be very enticing in scenarios where gold is not the most precious resource on the map. Just remember, the poor micro potential makes them really, really susceptible to certain enemy strategies. With that all covered, let's round off the build with a couple of loose threats. Again, focusing just on the crossbow line since the bowman line was rather self-explanatory. First touching upon a couple of topics that I ended the build still not having great answers for. First of all, I don't like technologies that only affect one unit. This was something I talked about a lot in my recent April patch review. Technologies that only affect one unit, in my mind at least, are very dumb because you should just bake that effect into the unit's elite upgrade in the first place. Now, I think it is more acceptable for common units like the Cavalry Archer having Parthian tactics. Why? Because it allows civilizations to specialize with those units to differing degrees. For unique units, it's completely unacceptable because that's the only civilization who gets that unit anyways. But even so, I try to avoid them when possible, hence why I think Windless should affect crossbow unique units, which is something at least, and self bow and composite bow maybe should do the same for other archer units, though I think that would be much, much harder to balance. In summary, while I don't like texts like this, I have them here both to make the build a little more interesting and also to reflect more of how the game exists now. Just know that if I had my way, these technologies, while I do like them and would want to still see them in the build, would affect much more than just the one unit I am highlighting for each of them here. Now, the other uncertainty I had specifically about the crossbow line is that their playstyle has kind of an innate contradiction in it. Namely, you do more damage when the enemy is close, but also your unit is destroyed in melee. Um, that's something that I thought could be kind of cool because it has this risk return element, but I feel like I may have taken it too far. Like this crossbow build might actually be too weak because its power mostly comes from waiting for the enemy to get close before shooting. Uh, historically, crossbows were much, much better in close quarters than at a range. Like, the Battle of Crecy is a perfect example of how French crossbowmen were completely outgunned by British longbowmen just because the longbows had just as much power at a range as up close, whereas the French crossbowmen were always more effective against enemies charging into melee combat. So even though it is, I think, a fairly good reflection of the actual history of the unit, I'm not sure it would be very fun to use, and I think it may make the unit a little bit too weak. So that could be something I could see tweaking in future if it seemed to be too problematic at any point. And lastly, like I mentioned, there are a lot of unique units that could be adapted or adjusted based on the changes I'm making here. Like, since my Bowman line has plus one range over the current Archer line, the Longbowman's bonus range is much less desirable, so that would need an update. How would I do that? Well, I'm not really sure. There's, there's a lot of ways you can go about it, and I kind of want to hold back on all of that discussion until I do my larger archer changes. Just because right now I think it would be too much to dump into a single build all at once. If you guys have thoughts on how some of the unique units might change to adapt to this particular build, I'd love to hear them in the comments section. But lastly, lastly, the current Arbalester model. I, I've kept the Crossbowman and Arbalest model for my iterations of the unit, but I really hate how the current Arbalester looks. Is it the plume on his head? No. Is it his armor, his big shoulder pads? No. It's because he has a wooden crossbow. Arbalests 
were made of metal. That's what made them special. And it has wood, even in the freaking upgrade icon. It's a wooden crossbow, whereas the crossbow upgrade icon is a metal crossbow. I don't understand it. They could have just swapped the two and it would have made a Anyways, let's move on to some tabled ideas. Stuff that I decided not to include, but I was tempted to do at one point or another. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, bonus damage versus elite units for the crossbow line. Again, elite units are units that cost gold. It's definitely a way to capture the history, but it is clunky and lazy in my opinion, so it's something I wanted to avoid. Another one, the crossbow line doesn't benefit from archer attack technologies, but instead has much better bases. This would mean that you could do something like remove bracer from certain civilizations without completely destroying your main ranged power unit. Could even be cool to maybe have the crossbow share some technologies with other units like Siege. Like maybe the Windless technology could affect the Scorpion and Mangonel line. Maybe Windless could be at the university. There are a bunch of options here. Uh, another one, a semi-regional feudal precursor to the crossbow called the Latchbow, referencing a kind of more primitive crossbow that didn't have a crank. Instead, you just kind of pulled back the string, shot it. it was a lot lighter, it's a lot weaker, and it could be a really cool way to signal that a civilization is crossbow focused by giving them the latch bow earlier on. Uh, this is one I might go with at some point in the future. And another one, Baveze, as a common technology hitting all archers, possibly, including skirmishers and handgunners. Pavese, or more broadly like big archer shields, were used all across the world. And while iconic to the Italian city-states, it didn't make sense to me that it would be completely locked to them. And lastly, other potential technologies like crossbow stirrup or kranikins, they kind of did the same thing as the windlass, namely help you reload it faster, and windlass is definitely the most famous among them. But most importantly, I didn't want to have multiple technologies that all only affected one unit. This is definitely a thing I would need to talk about in a future video. Video, but I could see a game where every unit has a couple of unique technologies that only benefit it, but just having like a few units have one that benefits only them, it's just weird and discordant and I don't agree with it. But either way, that's why I didn't use crossbow stirrup or kranikins as the technology instead of windless. And with all of that, we come to the end of this build. I hear my wife coming in through the door upstairs, so I'm going to need to finish this up pretty quickly. Let's look at the likeliometer! In my opinion, how likely is it that these units, the bowmen and the crossbowmen, could be subdivided from the current archer line and implemented in the game, maybe looking a little something like how they look in this build here? And in my opinion, these two units get on the likeliometer a... 1 out of 10. I think it's almost impossible that this will ever happen. They are too iconic to the game. People would absolutely flip a shit if this were to be done, even if I, and I think many of you, might like to see it. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear from you now. How do you like this design? A bit of an unusual one. What do you think of the changes for archers more broadly that I'm kind of insinuating here? If you had to split the archer line into bowmen and crossbowmen, what would you have done differently? And lastly, what else would you like to see me do on this channel going forward? But until then, my name is Robbie Howell. And ciao for now.